G'day there, Ray Corcoran here. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about how to buy a used car and how to save thousands of dollars in the process. I'm gonna go over basically how I approach buying cars. Uh, it might be a little bit more OCD than some people, but uh, I do love cars and, uh, you know, but that, unfortunately they're expensive and they're a depreciating asset. So it's important to me uh, to make sure that I get a good deal on it. In this video, we're gonna be going over um, each stage of the car buying process and how you can make basically make money at every stage and uh, make sure that uh, by the end of it, that you've basically got the maximum car for the minimum cost. So on this channel, one of the big things that I really focus on is uh, big wins and saving money for the big things in life. So weddings, babies, house, car. If you can get good savings on the big things in life, that can be uh, the equivalent of saving thousands and thousands of coffees and smaller expenses in your life. And one of the things that I wanna go over as well is that it's not just a spreadsheet or financial decision. There are other factors. The price of the car is not the only factor. It's very important, but it's also about your lifestyle and comfort and convenience and happiness and all the benefits that you get from a car. So I don't wanna look at this. If we looked at this from a purely financial uh, perspective, even though this is a finance channel, that you know, we would end up looking at just the crappiest cars, the you know really old ones, ten years old plus, and cars that probably you probably don't want to drive. Now, most people don't actually want to drive those cars, and if you're broke and you've got no money, then you're probably going to have to start there. But for a lot of people, they've been working for a while, they do have some savings, and they want to buy a car, you know, somewhere in the middle potentially that is uh, that is still nice. And uh, I don't have a problem with that. I think a lot of personal finance people, they just want you to drive a miserable car. But if you like cars or you, you get a lot of enjoyment out of it, I'd rather look at how can we make it possible and how can we make sure we get a good deal um, because it is a depreciating asset. So we can do things to make sure that you do get a good deal and you still get the car that you want, but you're not gonna um, set yourself back too far as well. So once you've decided which car, which type of car that you wanna get, you need to go on to your, you know, in Australia, we've got car sales, which is the major car buying website, or you know, if you're in a different country, just go to your major um, car buying website. And what we wanna do is obviously search for the car that you want. Now, you wanna set up uh, email notifications and reminders. Um, a lot of these uh, websites have their own app. So what you wanna do is make sure you set up reminders for uh, your saved search. So if I type in the specs of the car that I'm after, I'm gonna type in you know, this car in this year um, under this many kilometers and potentially with you know, a certain number of options. Now, that's gonna be your search obviously and you're gonna get notifications now when someone lists a car on that website uh, that fits that criteria. The important thing, that, that's all very straightforward. Uh, the important thing here and the first tip is to check those sites uh, twice a day. So most people, they check every now and then. And the problem with that is if you're someone that wants to get a really, really good car for the lowest price possible, you can't do that. You have to be checking these sites uh, at least once a day, if not twice a day, in the morning and the evening. It doesn't take long. It takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds, but it means that you are going to see an excellent deal the second it drops. This is crucial because, and I'll go through my um, recent purchases in a second, both the cars that I bought were bought within 24 hours roughly of listing the car. So that is a crucial point and probably one of the most important parts of this whole process. The best deals go quickly. So if cars are incorrectly priced or they're, you know, they're priced, you know, at, at a fair, in a fair way, um, they're going to go very, very fast. So you need to make sure that you jump on it. This is probably the most important part of the whole process. A lot of people think that negotiating on the day, you know, being a master negotiator is how you're gonna get it done. But I actually find the opposite is true. Um, you definitely will negotiate, um, but I reckon 80% of the work is done when you get you find the right car priced correctly on the website from the get-go. Then when you get there, you'll still negotiate, but a lot of the hard work is done. You'll try and negotiate a little bit further and that's how you land on an excellent price. So to demonstrate this, I'll kind of go over uh, two cars that I've purchased recently. So uh, my car, which is a BMW M3 competition pack, and my wife's car, which is a Audi Q5 Sport. So both these cars, as I said, they were listed. Uh, I was checking, when, when I bought, both bought these at different times. I didn't buy them at the same time. But basically, when I was buying each of these cars, I was checking twice a day, sometimes even more, because I, I love cars. But I was checking super regularly. Both these deals, the BMW, for example, that is a $160,000 car, brand new. 
Um, and in Australia, by the way, if you're not in Australia, the car prices are ridiculous here. We get big taxes, so cars are way more expensive than they need to be. But basically, that car is 160K new, second hand, uh, which is what I got mine. We had about 20,000 Ks on it. Still in excellent condition, but second hand, they're probably a bit worth that, you know, that many Ks and uh, the spec that I got it in was about 110,000 to 115,000. However, I saw one come up that was listed at 96,000, which was not unusual, it was not outrageous, but it was a very, very good price, especially considering the car was black. Um, black ones, there's not as many black ones around. They're generally more desirable. There's lots of white ones for sale, so you can get them a lot cheaper. So it was kind of partially incorrectly priced, and the other half is uh, the seller just wanted to get rid of it. And all these things are gonna be benefits to you. People that don't know how to price their car, either don't care how they price their car, you know, maybe they got a lot of money, um, people that don't like selling cars, that's gonna be a major one. People, a lot of people don't like selling cars. I don't, don't really like selling cars. You get all the stupid SMSs, you get all the annoying people. Um, it's just a painful process. And if you're a busy person, which this guy was, actually both the people I bought those cars from were busy people, the opportunity cost to, you know, that, that, that it's just too big for them. And they don't wanna spend all this time trying to uh, sell this car and try and squeeze out an extra couple of hundred dollars or an extra few thousand. So once you've set up your alerts so you get notified regularly, even just manually checking it as well, because sometimes those alerts don't come through straight away, you need to be able to understand what is a good deal. And to do that, you need to understand the different options and inclusions that cars have. A lot of the time cars get listed and the owner actually has either no idea um, what the exact model is or they forget to uh, mention certain benefits or certain upgrades the car has. So some cars will have better sports seats, they'll have uh, bigger wheels, they'll have a different rear bumper or, or different body kit on it, um, or certain panels are different for the, the nicer models. So if you know that's the case, um, there was numerous cars when I was looking for my wife's car that people actually didn't know how to price it. And this happens more than you think. There's a lot of dealerships that are outside of metro areas that sometimes have people that are not that experienced uh, pricing the cars and if they're pricing it wrong or they don't they can't tell the difference between the regular version and the sport version for example um, that's a huge opportunity for you so um, it's crucial that you sort of understand the different levels of trim and the different levels of uh, specifications that they have because that's how you can really spot uh, cars that are incorrectly priced and we're kind of like at the stock market we're looking for inefficiencies in the market and if you don't understand the product extremely well uh, you don't have to do this by the way, but if you really want to get a great deal, you need to understand the differences, the, the subtle differences between different models because some look the same, but they've got a better engine or a better um, interior trim or whatever it is. So if you don't know that, then you're gonna leave yourself exposed to overpaying or not realizing when it's actually an excellent deal. Another key thing is understanding the location of the dealership or the private seller in relation to where you are. So for when I bought the BMW, the seller was actually two hours and about 15 minutes away from where I live up north. So basically what I found was, you know, a lot of people can't be bothered traveling that far or they just want to ask all the questions over the phone um, and they, you know, try and figure out as much as possible before they actually go there because they're lazy. And that can be your advantage because nobody wants to go see it. You know, nobody's going to put a deposit down in uh, sight unseen in most situations. So the fact that you're willing to drive all that way, um, ideally as, as soon as you see the listing, um, it puts you in a very good position to have first dibs on the car. Will the car be the one to buy? Who knows, you have to wait till you get there. But once you head there, you'll be able to, um, you have first, uh, the first crack at it. And that's very, very important. For me, for both cars that I bought, I was the first person to inquire, I was the first person to uh, see it, and the first person to obviously leave a deposit. And getting in first is probably one of the most important parts of this whole process, as I mentioned. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for a car right now, make sure that you're first. It's very, very important. If they want to catch up, you know, if they want to do an inspection on Saturday and it's Thursday, try get it in on Friday, Friday morning, Thursday night. Um, do what you can to shorten the timeline because the less timeline, um, the less chance of something wrecking the deal. Like someone uh, messaging them saying, I'll pay more than the other person or whatever. That sort of stuff can pop up. So you want to make sure that um, you jump on the deal quick you have your deposit ready, you have everything ready to go, your finance ready or whatever it is, so that you can jump on a good deal when it pops up. The next part is the actual day that you rock up to inspect the car and the negotiating. So 
hopefully by this point, you're the first person to go to a great priced car. And all we're doing is really just checking that it is as it uh, has been advertised. Just make sure that, you know, you, you sort of command their respect, um, you know, in a very, it's a very, very subtle thing, but I just thought I'd mention it because if you come across like an idiot or an airhead, or you're kind of admitting that you don't really know much about cars or um, that sort of thing, um, it can put you in a bit of a weak position when it comes time to negotiate because they think you're probably gonna be a pushover or they know more than you do. Um, and it means that they're gonna be probably more firm than they uh, than you want them to be. Um, I think you wanna have, have a strike a balance of you know, pointing out things that will cost you reasonable amounts of money and then factoring that into your final offer with them. So if it's listed for 50 and you see about a thousand bucks worth of things that actually need to be fixed to bring it up to speed that maybe weren't expected or weren't addressed on the ad, then um, you can have that conversation and it can be a very practical perspective. When it comes time to negotiation, I think, you know, if you can build rapport, uh, obviously mirror, I've done a, a separate video on building rapport with people, but um, if you can sort of mirror them, you know, if they're, uh, you know, enthusiastic, be enthusiastic. If they're uh, a bit more direct, be a bit more direct. Uh, you can build that rapport faster. The more rapport that you can build with that person uh, when it comes time to the negotiation, um, you know, they do like you and they're kind of, people are more flexible for people they like generally. Um, and the way I frame it normally is, I always say to them, I'm like, look, I, and I actually mean this when I say it, is I'm not gonna give you a disrespectful offer, uh, but if we could get the price to here, um, I would put a deposit down right now, pending any mechanical inspections. That, I've done that last two times and they've always accepted it. And I never tried to get the lowest, you know, most offensive price I could get from them. You know, I'm sure some people I could squeeze out an extra few hundred bucks or an extra thousand or whatever. Um, I also don't want to piss them off because if I'm going to inspect it, it's already a good deal. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to go inspect it unless I see that it's like already pretty priced pretty well. And then I'm just trying to squeeze out that last sort of extra mile out of the car. The final part is the uh, the tax side of things as well. I can't remember the exact numbers on the tax deductions, but you know, it ends up being you know, I think it was it was several thousand dollars, um, if not more. So uh, you kind of get a you know, for me it was an excellent deal. Sure, it's a still a depreciating asset, but I was able to get something that I really wanted. You know, one hundred sixty thousand dollar asset when it was brand new. Um, you know, very shortly after it was uh, was brand new, like it's still it's still very new, still in good nick, still a, a late model car. And I get to have that for under half the cost, pretty much, um, or around around half, give or take. So you get a lot of car for not a lot of money. And also in terms of the depreciation curve as well, you know, if you can get cars that are, uh, you know, in their second, third, or fourth year, um, that's when you get the sweet spot of not too old, but also you've missed and dodged the bulk of the depreciation as well. So I hope you found that useful. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or comments, uh, leave them down below and uh, I'll see you in the next video.